Hello and welcome back to coverage here at GP Richmond. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe. I'm in the booth all by myself because we are covering I'll redo do my best. from end to end here at GP Richmond. This is a Players, you may begin. All right, good luck, man. This is good a luck. huge yeah. match. 10-1-1 for Alexander Chen, 11-2 for Reed Duke, and Reed okay. needs a win. If he wins, we think that he's into the top eight. That would have him leading the player of the year over Seth Manfield by at least three points if he makes it into the top eight. If he loses this match, he's effectively eliminated from top eight competition unless a miracle happens. Yep, so 19. huge stakes for Reed against Alexander Chen. Let's head down here. Again, it's just me in the booth. I'm going to be basically getting out of the way and letting the players go. I'll be chiming in from time to time. Basics. See how this thing plays out. A perfect start for Alexander Chen. He has Delver of Secrets. And it's your turn. Upkeep, trigger. Mm -hmm. Take it all set. And he does not transform it on the first turn, so that's a sigh of relief right away. Match for turn. Combat. ET. Secrets. Okay. The second copy of Delver of Secrets mm -hmm. is the battlefield That's for Alex. Uh, two triggers. Uh, this one first. Mm -hmm. um, okay, no reveal on this one. This one on the stack. Fetch. 19. Looks at one with the first Delver, says, I don't like it. Shuffles it away, trying to hit with the other. Also, I have to make a correction to what I said a minute ago. If Reed makes it into the top eight, he will be in the lead. But the four points minimum right, that he'll get for three being top eight <laughs> Maybe. will replace right, his this worst triggered. GP mm -hmm. finish. I'll show you brain So it would not actually put him three or four points clear. It would put Could him one or two up? points clear, rather. Sure. Still, of course, the critical step in this juncture is getting ahead of Seth Manfield and putting the ball back in his court for Play player of the year, and it would have gone. 14. So, second Delver of Secrets second does transform goes. into Insectal Aberration. Another Delver on the stack. And Alexander Chen is off to the races. Sure. All right, pass turn. A triple Delver start here for Alex. He's got to do something. He finds Diabolic Edict. Boy, he could have used that this turn. Or last turn, excuse me. He's got Liliana, the last hope, which can take care of one of the untransformed Delvers. Fetch so hoping 13. that it resolves, uh, which might be a tall order. Cast Brainstorm. Okay. One, two, three. Uh, your Fetch resolves. A little bit of a hold your breath moment there from Reed as Alex casts a brainstorm in response to a fetch land, indicating the possibility of a stifle. But Alex says your fetch resolves, so we just find it out here. Curious to see what he goes for. Diabolic Edict, perhaps preferable in the face of a possible volcanic island counterspell here from Alex. 13, 19, right? Yeah, that's what I got. He's got a lot of work to do. He's going to go for Liliana. I think he figures he's just too far behind. Kind of needs this to resolve and needs to just start picking off spell their pierce. With their spell pierce. We can fight back with Force of Will. Force of Will, I'm at 12. So I have 19 to 12. Yep. That's fine. She resolves. All right, Liliana, the last hopes yep, on the battlefield. It takes down he gone. one Richard. untransformed on Delver, but Delver there's still two of them Great left. Ponder. And this one's going to transform as well, thanks to Ponder on top of the river. That brings that out of range of Liliana, the last hope, at least as far as taking it off the battlefield. Cast the Ponder. Yep, results. Uh, until my neck or your next turn, right? So it'll be a two-one on my turn if uh, you close up on one, right? Uh, it will be a one-one on your turn. Oh yeah, 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 one-one. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. what, that's what I meant. Alex 
clearly thinking about how his clock looks at this point. Right, draw from Ponder. Mm -hmm. Does he want to take an attack step to get Lily on Blast Hook off the battlefield? Plan for turn. Mm -hmm. Waste your Volcanic Island. Mm -hmm. Slam Hunter combat. Mm -hmm. uh, both of you. Six. And he's nine to a team or six. Diabolic Edict to you. Respond to that. Mm -hmm. Diabolic Edict on the stack for Duke. Cast Divert. Divert is the card from Alexander. Can I read that? Yeah. Change okay. the target uh, of target resolves. spell with I'll a single target, target unless that spell's right. controller is two. And he's going to change the target from Alex to read. Is there anything left in the tank here for Duke? Close on this one. This one's small. Go. So he can Go. keep himself mm -hmm. alive, at least ostensibly. Enter combat. Turn both at you. Take four damage down to two. Attempt to bolt you. Yep, that'll do Lightning a good bolt game. to finish okay. things off for Alexander Chen. That's game number Always one going to the off. Looks like Alex uh, is one versus, uh, one as well. versus control player I played against this two, weekend. One. Snap edicted me. I said mm. nah. <laughs> nah. That one did not fly. Maybe we could hear from Reed on the uh, the early turns. This is a, a little clip that we got with Reed about how the games develop, and as we could see, the early turns were so critical in this last game. So here's Reed on the early turns. Reed, every matchup's different, of course, but in general, what should we be watching out for when we see you play out the early turns of your games? Well, the thing to remember is that Grixis is a deck that's playing for the mid game and the long game. So as long as I'm surviving, I'm doing fine. But it's basically three different things that can happen in the early game. Number one is I can put him to Turok on the stack. That's amazing. That's that's the yeah. the real treat. You know, that's when my opening hand is is fantastic, and I'm going to get a big advantage going into the mid game. Um, the other extreme is if I'm missing my land drops and or getting killed by a Delver of Secrets or a Reality Smasher or something like that. That's when things are going badly. Otherwise, if I'm making my land drops and nothing much is happening, that's exactly according to plan. Right. So uh, there's a classic article. Who's the beatdown? The answer is never you. Right, yeah. In the um, early game. I'm not really trying to do anything proactive or force the action unless I get one of those specific him to Turok into Planeswalker type draws. Okay, away from the battlefield, how much mental energy do you put on what your opponents are doing in the early game? Like, if, they if they're on the play and they lay a particular land, are you instantly going into, I can name 54 of their 60 or 58 of their 60, or are you really focusing on your own? Uh, I'm trying to process any piece of information that I can gather and uh, being able to predict early on what deck my opponent is playing is very important, particularly if it could be a combo deck where they're going to, you know, like, for example, uh, I played a match the other day where my opponent goes Underground Sea, Thought Seas. And I said, oh, well, it's probably a Grixis Control Mirror. And then the next turn they went... Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, Ad Nauseam, you know, Ad Nauseam right. kill you, and they were Storm Combos. So having, you know, knowing that those two things are both distinct possibilities can inform my decisions in the early turns. So that is Reed on the early turns. Early turns, so important. All right. I'll we'll go first for the team Sounds like a plan. They really do, do try well. to get a threat out early and then keep you off one. balance for long enough for that threat to kill you. It's such a huge part of their primary game plan. We're heading in the game number two. 
Reed now has to win back-to-back -back games against Alexander Chen to put himself in a very likely position for top eight and the player of the year. With a loss, Keep. Reed would fall to 11-3 and three with one round to go. It is also not impossible that he makes the top eight from there, but it's likely to turn this. Underway. Touch. 19. Mm hmm Tropical Islands. Alex gets a trop. Does he have a threat? Let's go with uh, one Nimbly Boy. Sure. Oh. Got Read. Sitting with a copy of Power Blast in his hand. Can't do anything about it. So we do see a key sideboard card in hand here. Good turn. There's a Draw. snaring bridge. Could make life difficult for Alex. Just ponder. Read already in the tank. Okay. It's just a 1-1 one -one with Shroud at the moment, but Team of Delta will be able to uh, fill up the graveyard shockingly quickly. Get that this takes a Enter combo. 19-19. Yep. Nimbly Boy in. I'll pass turn to you. And uh, Reed falls down to 19. So I'm going to go for a brainstorm. brainstorm. Your brainstorm resolves. Ooh, some good stuff there for Reed. Snapcaster Mage, Lightning Bolt, and a Baleful Strings he found off of that Brainstorm. He wants to make sure that he keeps hitting his land drops as much as possible. Beyond that, that is some action. Fight here over this baleful strip. Power of Blast targeting Force of Will, but there's a response here from Alex. He's got something as well. Oh, did I cut you? Okay. I'm not I'm, sure, I'm, but I'm feel free to do it again. Alright, fetch a Falk. We're gonna go Fluster Storm, uh, Storm Trigger 3. I'll put four copies on your Power Blast. Okay, so this is countered. This is countered. It's your turn. Okay. So Flusterstorm ends the proceedings there, countering the fire cards in yard. There's already six cards Under. in the graveyard. Sure. No, excuse me, five cards in the graveyard for the Mongoose. There's going to be six after this pond. Seven is the lucky number there Keep for the Under. Mongoose to get to a 3 3. Line for turn. Oh, there it is. Air out threshold. Attack. 14. I will then put a. Uh, one Delvery boy on the stack. Okay. Got it. 
Delver of Secrets. So another good draw here from Alexander Chen. Reed really trying to scrap it back in his direction. He has lost access to red mana. So he may have to settle oh, for a turn. That's fine. Six, right? Yep. Yep. Good turn. Uh, trigger. Mm -hmm. Show you a fluster storm. Mm -hmm. Cluster Storm was the top card of the library, storm. so Delver of Secrets is going to transform combat. immediately and guarantee three Blood damage in. progression. Pass turn to you. Yes. It's force of will, but that's not what he needs. He needs lands. How many? I have three cards in hand. You know about one Cluster Storm. Draw. Read with two copies of Snapcaster. Enter combat. No mm -hmm. third land. Eight. Pass turn to you. Eight's down to eight. I chase the Mind Sculptor off the top is the Go. opposite of what he wants. Expensive you. cards. This is Lightning Bolt upstairs for Alexander Chen. He's looking Five. to knock Reed Duke out here. Take my turn. Mm -hmm. Draw. Enter combat. Two. Down to two for Duke. Pass. Considering just playing a Snapcaster Mage at this point. May not get a chance to do anything else with it. Could matter. Power spawn. Well, you. He does have Force of Will plus well, Jason one life to one. counter it and go Force to one. But Alexander Chen has a lethal bolt, course. but there's that Fluster okay. Storm, and that's going to do it. Alexander Chen. <sighs> Dispatches of Reed Duke in two quick games. Did you bring in um, Bridge? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. I actually, I was walking by, I was seeing when you played Saito, I saw your board plans on the monitor mm -hmm. and said originally you hadn't bring in, brought in Bridge. And the f immediately after I played against Grixis Control, I uh, said, all right, I won't bring in my stuff. Lost to a Bridge in game two. <laughs> oh. So you heard it there. And uh, so that's Reed Duke. He's in really bad shape for top eight after that loss. Basically, what's going to happen now is he's going to play the next round and try to maintain his X and three record. With a little over 800 players in the tournament, 850-ish, it's not impossible. We've seen it happen before that somebody with an X and three, in this case 12 and three record, has snuck their way in in that eighth spot. But that's slim. Usually only one does, if any, and oftentimes none of them do. So a tough loss there from Reed Duke. We're going to invite him back into the booth right after these messages.